All right, ladies and gentlemen, there I go saying ladies and gentlemen again. We are back. <laughs> Listen, we're not trying to give the devil credit, but we know he's mad. I have done 700 streams, actually way more than that. Anyways, I've done a lot of streams and I've never had my actual stream program completely freeze and shut off. So that's what just happened. My entire program shut down and there's nothing I can do about it. We lost the recording. It's still going to be up on YouTube, but we are going to be going into part two. If you're just jumping on, make sure that you go watch part one. I'll link it in the description. We're going to push through. It's frustrating because we're like the algorithm, the views, we, all of our nerd stuff we think about in our head. It doesn't matter. We're destroying Satan's kingdom before we left. Well, I guess I'll give you guys a minute to come in here. We, we basically had Angela share her testimony in part one. Nayla shared some of her testimony in part one. And then we started to talk about like, what is the new age movement? new age practices and so i guess we can have you quickly recap it again angela you don't have to say everything you said because it will be in yeah. part one but kind of just the overview of what the new age movement is tldr version is yes. that the new age is a blanket term um for all of these little counterfeit practices that um i like how nayla described it before it's all lowercase truths um and they all steal from the uppercase truth because the devil's agenda y'all is to steal kill and destroy yes. as we just saw evidenced with the live stream going out he's a sore loser he he can't create anything he can only take what god has already created and so that's really just what the new age is as a whole it is a counterfeit of what is the actual godly authentic and the reason that it's so attractive to people is because it puts you in the throne of God. It says that you are your own God. You are your own creator. You are actually your own savior. And so there's no accountability for your sin, which is just so convenient. There's no accountability for sin. There's no need to repent. There's no need to die to yourself. Oh, unless it's an ego death, which again, Everything in the New Age is a paradox. It's a house of cards because on one hand, you're supposed to be perfect, whole, and complete. But on the other hand, you have to do all these works to achieve perfection, wholeness, and completion. So good. And just some of the things that would fall, as Angela said, would be things like yoga, meditation, yes. um, the law of attraction, sorcery, mind science, reincarnation, astral projection, UFOlogy, spiritual psychology, any occultism, Gnosticism, Paganism, Mysticism, Hinduism, Buddhism, all the isms and schisms and weirdisms, <laughs> um, witchcraft, all of these things, seeing mediums, psychics, tarot cards, Ouija boards, all of these things would fall under the new age movement, new age thought process and thinking. And as Angela said, it's this becoming like God or actually becoming God, becoming your own yes. God. And it's the, almost the exact thing that the devil told Adam and Eve. Like, if you eat of this, you'll be, you'll be God. God is basically, he was telling them, God doesn't want you to be him. If you go a chapter prior, God made us in his image. So the new age movement, they try to be like God the same way the devil wanted to be like God in heaven. He got cast down for literally wanting to be God, wanting to be worshiped, wanting to be praised. The new age movement is basically the devil's reconstruction of what he fell for. He fell trying to be like God, be worshiped, leading the other angels. And the new age movement tells you, you can be your own mini God. You can be your own mini version of God. You don't need God. You don't need someone telling you what to do. You can ascend. You can enlighten. So all these practices Angela and Nayla were doing are enlightenment. They're to enlighten you, to level up in the new age realm, and to become like God. But guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, you are already made in God's image. God has already given you his power, his spirit, his anointing. He's already made you just like him. You are sons and daughters of God. You don't need some demonic practice to circumvent your identity in Christ. You are a son and daughter of God. You have an inheritance, the Bible says. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of your inheritance that you've been given the Holy Spirit. So it blows my mind. I'm like, why would you want the new age? You, you could have the power of God. You can lay hands on the sick. You can cast out demons. You can preach. You can see lives change. You can have joy and peace. The new age is absolutely a counterfeit to everything that God has for your life. Just like Egyptians, pharaohs, they threw their staff on the ground and became snakes. The Bible says that when God's people threw their staff on the ground, Aaron, it became a snake and ate mm. all the other staffs. And so, um, or was that Aaron? I think it was Aaron. Well, it was one of those guys. I, I just preached on this last night. I don't even remember the name. My mind went blank. But the point is that God's power is more real than all this other power. So Nayla, I wanna ask you this question, okay? The new age movement is growing in popularity. Lots of people are joining the new age, falling under the umbrella. We have Christians in the chat. You guys are here. We got to talk about you that are practicing the new age movement. 
Tell me, Nayla, what is the appeal? Why, why is this celebrities, all this uh, law of attraction, manifesting your destiny, making vision boards, speaking things out? What, what are your thoughts on this is becoming so popular? What is the appeal of the New Age movement? Yeah, the appeal of the New Age is that it looks like spirituality and God made every human being to be a spiritually mm. hungry creature. We are all created, like you said, in God's image, and we are designed by God to hunger for God, to long for him, to want to seek spiritual things, to want to seek a, a spiritual reality with God. And so because that is like our fundamental nature as human beings, we're all looking for God. And that's what New Ages are doing. They're looking for the truth. They're looking for God. And that's what I was looking for in the New Age. I wanted to heal so that I could ascending consciousness to understand to fully comprehend the divine but the lie of new age is that you're going to comprehend the divine by realizing that you are divine so mm. the same lie that the serpent gave eve in the garden that you will become like god whereas the one and only true living god actually just wants a relationship with us it's a father child relationship he wants to be reconciled with us unified with us through love not that we're trying to usurp him right that that was like you said why satan fell because he wanted to usurp god so new age is attractive because on the outside it looks like it's it's a spiritual buffet of counterfeit offers for what god is actually offering through the gospel of jesus christ um but the devil has done such a good job at convincing people that christianity is like this rigid um D like dogmatic legalistic uh religion created by old white men and it's part of colonialism and all these evils of the world that if you're like a spiritually hungry person growing up in this culture and you're looking around for god you wouldn't necessarily think about going to church mm. or speaking to a christian but you would see this tarot card reader on youtube and, and she's telling you all these truths these little t truths about your life and about the nature of reality or you start to think like wow all these yoga teachers that i'm seeing they look really healthy and they seem to have like a high vibration so there's something spiritual there that i want to go toward and so that's what happened for me i didn't know that jesus was god because that was not part of my education in the spiritual life and I thought religion was like some stuffy old thing that was man-made. And I wanted the real thing. I, I was hungry for real spiritual wisdom and knowledge. So the New Age promises that, just like the serpent promised. Yeah, if you eat this fruit, you're going to have the knowledge of good and evil. So it's a promise of wisdom. It's a promise of um, freedom from the matrix, escaping this 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 human trap and ascending in higher consciousness. And that's very attractive because we belong in heaven with God. We come mm. from a higher consciousness. We come from God. And so we want to return to that. We all have a God-shaped hole in our hearts and we're hungry for him. We're longing for him. Um, and the devil has simply misdirected um, that longing towards the very evil that will keep us from God and send us to hell, which is just eternal separation from God. So all these practices of the new age will actually lead you to hell, which is the opposite of getting closer to God and being with him in eternity. But yeah, it's a very clever trick because like you said, Isaiah, he's kind of circumventing like your spiritual desire. He's, he's redirecting a good desire that God put in you for God and mm. he's redirecting it so that you want to become God, which is a complete mm. deception. That's not it, going to, um, yeah. It totally reminds me of when the apostle Paul talks about false prophets and he says, of course they come as, uh, disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. They're false apostles, mm -hmm. but they are like, basically they're like their master, the devil who disguises himself as an angel of light. So I see the new age movement as a perfect description of what that verse is talking about, where it mm -hmm. comes as an angel of light, it comes as healing, as you were doing, Angela, with all the healing and, and you were doing Nayla with the Reiki and it's healing, it's wholeness, it's health. I was recently talking to someone, they said, but all the stuff I'm doing is good. The new age stuff is not bad. But meanwhile, of course, they were wanting to take their life and they were depressed and they're sick in their body and all of that. But in their mind, they were thinking, how could this be bad? How could I be doing something so good 
healing people, helping right. people with Reiki and opening chakras and third eyes, but also inviting demons. Angela, will you talk to us a little bit about how it doesn't matter if your intentions are good, you are opening yourself up to demons. Do you believe that, Angela, when you're practicing these new age things, even if, like, my intentions are good doing yoga, I'm not trying to be a bad person, my intentions are good, and guys, I don't do yoga, I'm using just an example. My intentions are good with crystals, right? I'm like rubbing a crystal till I'm, my hands are bleeding because I'm trying to get money. I don't have bad intentions. Angela, is that not a deception to open yourself up to demonic powers? And then even some of these demons that enter into us, they try to tell us that they're friends with us, that they're nice and they they, they wanna be friends with you. And I know you guys had encounters with demons where they were like, hey, we're friends, we're good. You don't need to kick us out. So I know I just said a lot of stuff, but I would love to hear your thoughts on Angela, this whole, it's innocent brother, it's no big deal, it's, it's nice. Yeah, so what comes to mind instantly is the verse, the heart is deceitful above all things, it's desperately sick who can know it. That just lays out the foundation that we are not our best parameter of what is true. We are not our best parameter of what is good. We are not the best parameter of what is holy and pure and all the things that Philippians says that we should meditate on. And, you know, when I was in New Age, I thought that I had a relationship with God. I really did. I believed in God. I believed in Jesus. I wow. just, you know, I... I took what worked and left what didn't work when it came to Christianity because, oh, I liked the idea of Jesus and his character and turn the other cheek and selflessness and all these things. But sin, there is no such thing. So I was the one that was deciding that. And so that's really the foundation of New Age is that you get to decide what truth is. You get wow. to define what is true and what is not true, which, like I said earlier, that's a fallacy because. If my truth is different than your truth, then, well, then how can you tell me that Christianity is wrong? Because maybe that's just your truth then. So none of it ever actually makes sense, but it's appealing because it still puts you in that position where my heart knows best. My higher self knows best. And so everything in the spirit realm is about agreement. You know, throughout the Gospels, Jesus repeatedly says, like, your faith has made you whole, your faith has made you whole, your faith has healed you. So whatever your faith is in wow. is where your um is where your agreement ultimately lies. Now, if your faith is in something like subjective truth, because that's not actually a thing, even if you're believing with all your heart that what you're doing is good, because the objective reality is that it is wicked and that it is sinful and that it is depraved and that it is demonic, that's actually where your agreement is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you are practicing yoga, when you are practicing tarot, when you are practicing astrology, when you are involved in all of these new age modalities, you are coming into agreement with, you are coming into faith with, the spirit behind those things, which is, it's all divination. And yes, it is demonic because there's only one Holy Spirit. Come on. So by definition, every other spirit is thus unholy. So your spirit guides, right? The, the, the angels, the angel that I, th I used to think that my dead grandmother was with me all the time. Wow. But that was a demon. It was straight up a demon that I used to tell to touch me and to hold me and to comfort me. After I came to Christ, I told that thing to leave in Jesus' name and never felt it again. Why? Because it wasn't actually her. It was a demon. And when I called it for what it was, it had to go in his name because that's what they all have to do. They have to leave in his name because he's the only one with all, uh, all power and authority on heaven and earth. But when we don't know that, when we don't know better, we give our power away to the unholy spirits. And they take advantage of it because, again, Satan's only goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. So the demons are no different. They have the same agenda because they ultimately know what their they know what their fate is. They know the word of God. You have to remember that you know Satan tempted Jesus in the desert with the word. He yep. knew the word, so they all know the word. So they know how this is ending for them. And their goal is to take you with them because they hate you, because they hate how much God loves you. They hate that you were made in God's image and that God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to restore you back to himself through the cross. They hate that. 
They don't care about you personally. They just hate that God loves you. Wow. So it's really a war against the kingdom of God, all this stuff. It's it's nothing personal, but New Agers want to make it personal, which is something I just feel called to share, is that they'll always say, you need to be respectful. You need to be respectful of other religions. You need to be respectful of other beliefs. You know, this is what Jesus died for. I had someone tell me recently, you have to love all that Jesus died for. Jesus died for everyone. Yes, Jesus died for everyone. Why? Because he loves you and because he's the only one that could do it because of your innate sinful human nature that ultimately is contingent on the same sin isaiah like you said that got satan kicked out of heaven which is pride and that's what mm. the new age is all about it's all about pride because it's saying you know better and so yeah you are coming into agreement with demonic spirits it does not matter what your intentions are because ultimately those intentions are rooted in narcissism because you think you know better you think you know better than god that is pride and rebellion, it says in the word, is as the sin of yep. witchcraft. So just simply rebelling against the word of God in and of itself is a practice of witchcraft, which you're operating under that spirit of disobedience. That's what the Bible says. And so, yes, it is all demonic. You, you come into agreement with these things. It's so good, Angela. And one thing I wanted to point out what you're mentioning is one, I, I think people don't realize when you open the door to a demon, you don't, I've said this so many times, you don't get to pick what demon comes through that door. You right. don't have like, we're not over here picking at gym class what person we want on our team. And some demons, they act innocent, they act nice, they act kind. And some demons are not as wicked as other demons. We know that it, that Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, the demon gets seven of its friends more wicked than itself. Yeah. So there's levels to this. Some demons are less wicked, some demons are more wicked. When you start dabbling in the new age movement and all these practices we've been talking about tonight, you are opening yourself up to demons that want to, really they only have one job, and that's to still kill and destroy. That's their job description. What is their job description? Still kill and destroy. So you don't get to say, well, I'm just gonna allow a spirit of anger or lust or bitterness or perfection or whatever. Those things come in, they come in with a force, they come in like a flood, you give them an inch, they take a mile, and they wanna destroy your life. Now you, Angela, I wanna talk about deliverance as well now, you had a demon that was pretending to be your grandma. Will you go into a little bit more detail? And the reason why I want you to, there's people in the chat right now that have dead loved ones that they think are wandering around the earth, comforting them, whispering in their ear, you know, making them apple pie like they did when they were a kid. And I have people tell me like, I, I smell my mom who passed away her apple pie in my room and she comes and visits me at night and she loves me and I tell her to pray for me. And, and they innocently talk to Sadly, and I'm, I want to be very careful how I say this because I'm not trying to put people down and make you feel bad about talking to your, your dead mom, but I do want to tell you that is a demon. That is not your dead mom. You are being deceived. That is a familiar spirit. So go into a little bit of detail, Angela, about your grandmother who maybe people don't know was your best friend. She passes away and you truly believe now what? Her, that, tell us what you believe. Her spirit was now with you? Or what yeah, was it? Yeah, I, oh, I believed that she was with me all the time, in, around me, through me at all times. And you have to remember, everyone listening or watching, that our enemy does not play fair. He yeah. He's wicked. He is wicked by nature. He, he's not nice. He's going to he's gonna do really, really evil, disgusting things, like pretend to be your dead grandmother because he capitalizes on trauma. When you don't know the Lord and you don't call out to the Lord, he's going to infiltrate that because it's... In, easy easily accessible doorway for him and that's exactly what he did with me yeah i i was convinced she was there all the time and she i'm using air quotes if you're listening was always the one that said get that crystal do this thing do that wow. thing like she was guiding me she was I, I used to tell her like grandma i need you to help me do this or that and the demon doesn't care that its name isn't grandma it just cares that it's the one that i'm communing with wow so i was giving it permission by asking it to do these things and by inviting it into my space, you know, with all my silly visuals and imagining white light around the room and all this stuff that we think works in the new age by the power of our mind that doesn't actually work. The demons are literally laughing at us. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, I went after I came to know the Lord, there was this one time specifically in my kitchen and bear, bear in mind, I had no idea what deliverance was and I would actually go on for a full year after 
coming to Christ, not believing in deliverance, which hopefully we get into we're the time talk to talk about. about. That'll, that'll yeah. next. I have one more question for Nayla, and then we're going to talk about how you guys didn't believe and you went hyper, yeah. hyper, I call it crusty, dusty, religious, but we're yes. going to talk about that. We got time, but you were in your kitchen. So, you I didn't, I had no idea about deliverance. I had no idea that, you know, Jesus actually says like, you have all authority over, you know, to tread on the heads of serpents yep. and scorpions and Holy Spirit. I had no idea. I just knew I'm standing in my kitchen doing dishes. I feel this thing that I used to identify as her coming up next to me. The grandma this demon. Is probably, the demon yes, the grandma, grandma demon. Exactly. And I think, you know, at this point, it was like a week after I had thrown everything away. And I remember I like threw down the dish that I was cleaning and I said, you think that you've been posing as my grandma all this time. You get away from me. You go away in the mighty name of Jesus and you never come back to me. And then it just left and it was never there again. Wow. I yelled at it for probably like five minutes because I was so angry because when I understood that I had been deceived by, again, a very, very wicked spirit, a wicked yes. enemy that made me think that I was being loved and comforted for what, like seven years. It made me so mad. I I was infuriated at this thing. I wanted it away from me. And I somehow knew that Jesus's name was the only thing that could make that actually happen. And I never felt it since. It was wow. gone. Now, Angela, let me ask you this. This is just, I'm curious, you know, because I teach a lot in deliverance, obviously. And did you feel like the demon was in you or do you feel like it was around you, stalking you, following you? Like when you heard it talking to you, was it like a whisper in your ear? Kind of maybe mm. explain that dynamic because I'm I'm genuinely interested. I don't know the answer, yeah. but I know people will say like I felt it in me. But I have had people tell me a demon would follow me and stalk me and uh, watch me. Yeah. So how did you feel like where it was? I never saw her. It I I would feel it. Okay. So like the fact that I say I felt makes me think it was maybe in me, but I really don't know. I okay. never heard it, her voice speak through the thing, but I would get thoughts. So. Okay. So it's probably in yeah, you. Sounds like probably it was in, in me. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it was in you and thank the Lord that it came out of you. Now, Nayla, I wanted to bring something up. You had a demonic spirit that was tormenting you, harassing you. I mean, we all had many, okay. It wasn't just one. Yeah, Angela yeah, had many. many. I had many. Nayla had many. Um, and I'm not putting them out on blast. You can go watch their testimonies. They had many. Um, but Nayla, you had one. I'm trying to remember the name. It was something Christ, right? It was like, was it like, uh, yeah. Go ahead. You tell me Sophia about it. Christ. Sophia Christ. Yeah, so now you had a familiar spirit or a spirit calling herself Sophia Christ. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Sophia Christ is a goddess, in air quotes, if you're listening, um, who it's a demon that pretends to be a goddess and she calls herself Sophia Christ. So Sophia being the an ancient feminine symbol of the serpent or the goddess and then christ as in the christ um as in jesus christ um and so it's a weird kind of combination in terms of the doctrine behind that in new age it's a combination of a gnostic view of christianity and the christian mysticism um which believes that the serpent actually represented like the goddess or wisdom rather than the devil or evil and um and these kind of new age uh, concepts of goddess worship that really deify um, women and that want to think that the the physical earth is a goddess, is a woman, mother earth. And yeah, I was a goddess worshiper. So I guess all of the different goddess worships that I did uh, qualified me to eventually become a host body for this really high ranking demon for, who calls herself Sophia Christ. Wow. Yeah. And thank the Lord we're going to talk about you've gotten free and delivered from this. And, and I also want to make it clear, guys, there is deliverance in Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. We literally have a map with over 2,000 people doing deliverance as we speak all over the country on deliverancemap.com. It's no cost to you. You just find someone, meet with them, and they'll do deliverance on you. We desperately need deliverance in this generation. When pastors tell me, like, we don't need deliverance, I'm like, brother, you have not watched the news. You have not gone on social media. <laughs> if I scroll on TikTok right now, guys, for 10 videos, I can prove to you that we need deliverance in this generation. I mean, Witch Talk is has hundreds of millions of videos. I think when I post, used to post deliverance videos on TikTok, I was trending on Witch Talk and I had like thousands of witches trying to do spells on me and praise the Lord, it all did nothing because a, a curse without a cause can't land. 
But yeah, it's, it's very popular. If you go on TikTok, any of these platforms, witchcraft, new age mediums, psychic tree, all of this, Noga is popular. It's demonic and it will give you demons. I wish somebody would have told me that. I mean, come on. It will give you yeah. demons. Also, pornography is an open door to demons. Ouija boards is an open door to demons. Now, I want to ask you two this. I want to rem remind everybody that's live. And of course, you guys are like, you're repeating yourself while we're live. So people are coming in and out. These girls both taught yoga. They were instructors. They were practitioners. I'm going to ask you guys a very simple statement, okay? I know we're all tired of hearing about yoga. It, it means yoke. We're yoking to demonic spirits. There's still a lot of controversy in the chat tonight. A lot of people saying it's just stretching. It's no big deal. I, I want each of you to answer this. Do you believe... If somebody is innocently doing yoga, maybe at their church, not trying to call anybody out, but some of you out there have yoga at your church, do you guys believe that they are opening up the door to demonic spirits? I'll start with Nayla. Um, again, a teacher of yoga, a practitioner for many, many years. Do you think that if I just go yo do yoga tomorrow, am I really opening myself up to demonic spirits? Yes, absolutely. I mean, yoga is a physical practice where you use your whole body like a massive physical antennae to open portals to demons. It's literally worship of demons. You know how in the Bible we see being prostrate for the Lord, raising your hands yep. for the Lord, lying on, on your face for the Lord, clapping your hands for the Lord, praising Jesus. Well, yoga is demon worship. You use your body to make shapes that were designed to worship any of one of the 33 million Hindu gods and those demigods are demons. So it's quite literally demon worship through a physical expression of agreement with that spirit or that that unclean spirit, that demon that is behind each pose or asana. So even if you have the intention, I'm not doing this to worship a demon, it doesn't change the fact that you're doing something that was designed to worship demons. You are agreeing wow. with demon worship, whether you think you are or not. So yeah, you definitely like the devil loves that everyone is so into yoga, especially in the church, because yoga is one of the most effective ways to pump people full of demons. You wow. definitely get multiple demons per visit to the mat. It, it's like a really effective way to get people into the new age. I always say that yoga is a gateway drug to other occult and new age practices. And that was the case for Nayla, who became a blood witch, who was covering herself in her own blood. And the case for Angela, who became an astrologer and a starseed preacher, a starseed gospel preacher that thought she was from another planet, crash landed some farm somewhere underground and then made her way out <laughs> and was some alien. So these were yoga was the open door. Yoga, it's like they say marijuana yeah. is a gateway drug. You know, they say you just drink every alcoholic started with just one drink, which is why I still don't understand Christians that defend it. But anyways, that's a whole nother story. Um, this is the gateway into deeper things in the new age. It's where you just dip your toe in the, sh it's the shallow end of the new age. But as you said, it pumps people full of demons. And I was talking to a friend recently debating a friend about this. And I, I just, guys, it's so crazy. You can spend five minutes Googling, uh, not even 30 seconds Googling mm -hmm. yoga. And you're going to find everything we're saying is factual. It's a Hindu practice mm -hmm. and literally each stance, you know, the triple, double, double dog, dare you dragon backwards stance where you do all this stuff. That is an open door and it is a worship to a God. I mean, literally every stance has a God. I was reading on this Yogi website and I was showing my friend. I'm like, bro, this is not a Christian website. And this secular website is telling you you're doing prayer stances to foreign gods. So guys, I know this is going to make you mad. But it's okay. You could go cry somewhere else. It, you are doing prayer stances of foreign gods. Christian yoga is non-existent. There's no such thing. Mm -hmm. Just like yeah. there's no such thing as being a Buddhist and a Christian. People. I always want to challenge a Christian who says that they can do Christian yoga, which I'm putting in air quotes because that is a complete oxymoron in terms. It's like saying I can take a Ouija board and then I can move the, the Ouija board piece around the board talking to dead people in the name of Jesus. Yes. It doesn't make it any less demonic or occultic. It doesn't stop it being witchcraft because you put Jesus name on it. So if you want to do yoga and just slap Jesus name on it and people tell me, oh, I listen to Psalms while I do yoga or I listen mm -hmm. to the Bible app in the background. It doesn't change the fact that you're actually invoking demons and you're coming into agreement with witchcraft and you're worshiping unclean spirits that God says we should not worship. God says, you have one God, it's me. Don't worship any other gods. That's so, so good. It, there's, just no, there's no excuse to ever do yoga if you're a Christian. And if you're, if you're really struggling with that, 
And you need to ask yourself why you're so offended by the Bible, because God says, mm. don't worship anyone but me. So if you want to worship demons, then, you know, are you really a Christian? Because a Christian wants to worship Jesus Christ alone because he is the one and only true God. And the, the thing getting mad is actually not you. It's the demon in you getting yes. mad about it that you've exactly. allowed in. It's the demon in you. And pastors, yeah. listen, so there's pastors, pastors watching. If you're doing Christian yoga at the church and then going, I don't know why God's not showing up. You're, uh, it's because you're inviting the devil to your church. So Angela, I know you're chomping at the bit here as well. Guys, we, we literally can do a five hour podcast. Let's be honest. We're probably like, all right, question one, but Angela, I know you're chomping at the bit here. You want to, um, you want to let all the Christian yoga practice practitioners have it. What are your thoughts on, hmm. on yoga? Well, first of all, I just have to correct you. I did not crash land in a field. That was my soul contract. Okay. I chose to come in as a star seed. That was my soul that decided that to be incarnated. So, I mean, I, I, I make light of it, but these are like the things that me and Nayla actually believed. And it's, it's, it's funny, but it's depressingly yes. sad because it lends to the desperation of that mindset. But yep. that's just a little caveat. <laughs> Um, yeah, Nayla describing the Ouija, sorry. I say all the time that, stop laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just pictured you crash landing in a field and coming out as like a little plant. I'm sorry. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Guys, go watch my okay. interview with her. She talks about the starseed gospel. <laughs> And I had to bite my tongue and not laugh because, of course, it's it's your testimony, right? I, I listen. I did some crazy things that I laugh out. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm, good, I'm sorry. So you know the game Twister. Yes. So I always say that yoga is like Ouija Twister. It's <laughs> Ouija. yeah. It, it, it's literally the same thing. Like it does back to the intentions. Your intentions do not matter. In fact, the demons love when you're like, well. I have good intentions here because they're like, great. Okay. I have access then. Yes. It, wow. Everything about yoga. I have an in-depth episode on this on heaven and healing my channel. It's like two hours long. There's a little plug, but it, it's all about, I get into the history of it. And when you get into the history of it, you just see that this, the story of yoga, like the philosophy of yoga is that essentially this God came to teach little sons of God, by the way, all about the yoga practice, which they were then to teach humanity. Like that is the basic root of where it quote comes from. Obviously that's not true, but that's the story behind it. That's like the, the myth behind the yoga thing. And then the deeper you get into it, like Nayla said, every single pose and asana and sequence they are curated in such a way where it's supposed to be paying homage to these wow. gods. And if it's not to pay homage to the gods, it's to open your body up in such a way where you're supposed to achieve some sort of liberation. Um, it's called moksha. That's what they call it. And the objective of that is to set you free, to, to lead to the union of individual consciousness with that of universal consciousness. The aim of yoga is self-realization. And by the way, like Isaiah said, this is coming from the Indian Ministry of External Affairs, which is the government agency responsible for implementing Indian foreign policy. So this isn't like a Christian website saying this. This is actually where yoga comes from, an Indian resource. Um, and I have all that in my episode. Like you can listen to it. The curation, the intention, the design, the history, Every single thing with yoga is intrinsically rooted in paganism. It's intrinsically rooted in idolatry. And so it's all demonic. It does not matter what you think about it. What matters is what it is. Mm. And the word right. yoga means to yoke. So we know biblically that Jesus says, first of all, don't be unequally yoked. So if yep. you are a Christian practicing yoga, Yep. Secondly, Jesus says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's not your responsibility to yoke to any of these spirits to achieve anything. Your only responsibility as a Christian is to yoke to Christ because his is easy and his burden yeah. is light. But with yoga, it's all works. You know, you got to do this and that. All these poses, all these asanas, these rituals. That's because that's what it is. It's a ritual. Yoga is a ritual practice. And I say all the time that. You know, because the argument is, well, it's really good for my body. It's really this. It's really that. It's really, it's beneficial. Wow. Well, even that alone, there's scripture that says not everything that's 
you know, permissible is beneficial yep. Yep. and this isn't even permissible. So Good. the fact that it's, it's beneficial means nothing because ultimately it's killing you. It's killing your spirit. And People will say, well, it's good for my body, you know, go stretch, you know, go take a different class, like go to a spin class. I don't know, D go do something else, go lift weights. You don't have to practice yoga. It is not a physical practice with spiritual benefits. It is a spiritual practice with physical benefits. Mm. And the enemy, wa the enemy wants you to do it because it is pledging your allegiance to him with your body. It's good. Yes. And, and again, I think well, I would actually go ahead, Neela, go ahead. I was just going to add that as a yoga teacher of 10 of a, a decade and a practitioner for longer, like for my own personal practice, I really believed it was good for me. But right. I can say that yoga isn't even physically good for you unless you continue to do it until the day you die. If you mm -hmm. stop doing it, it's like a drug. If you stop doing it, you will actually experience real health issues that range from issues with your bones and joints. Um, to muscle tissue issues and I have experienced those when I stopped doing yoga it's actually a myth that it's good for you because twisting your body into these contorted demonic poses is not natural you Come would on. never just go yeah. for a walk and accidentally twist yourself into some kind of yoga pose it's it's actually a contortion and a contortion is an unnatural molding of the body into a demonic posture so I would even just add that you know we, it does have those physical benefits when you're doing it, but we shouldn't even be agreeing that it's good for you because it's mm. not good for you. Ultimately, physically, it's not good for you either. And guys, again, I have to keep saying this. this these are people that taught yoga. That, yeah. Like Nayla just said, I taught it for a decade. So please don't come here with your Facebook facts. Your, you know, Don't come in here with your Google facts telling yoga teachers, oh no, it is good, oh no, this. They taught yoga, they know what they're talking about. And to, to, um, to your point of the contortions, has, has anybody in the chat ever cast out demons? Have you ever seen somebody manifest a demon? Huh. They contort, I mean, sometimes you're in deliverance and it looks like you're at a yoga studio because the demon's yep. contorting, it's doing flips, it's on their back. I had one lady arch all the way upside down on her back, her head spun around. I was like, this is like a yeah. movie, but this is what demons do. They contort you, they make you scream, fall on the ground, slither around. So yeah, it's like, okay, if I'm doing deliverance and the demon's manifesting in yoga poses or looks like yoga poses, and then I'm at my church yoga class and it looks that way, I'm just like, oh, how about we just cast out a demon instead of doing yoga in the church? So yoga, okay, yoga is okay to do if you want demons. Yoga is okay as a Christian if you want to open yourself up to demons. If you don't want demons, don't do yoga. And don't go do yoga, get a bunch of demons, and tell me, you know, oh, deliverance doesn't matter, and then come and get deliverance and all that. Guys, just stop doing these practices. Stop getting involved. I do want to ask you guys, You, this might be, hey, I'm not really sure, but is there any, like, new age practices you can think of that maybe people in the chat don't even realize are new age practices that kind of like people just do and think are fine. And mm -hmm. I mean, my first thing that comes to mind is horoscopes. I know Christian people that are like, I'm a cancer, I'm a Libra. And I'm like, wait, you're a cancer. I cast out the spirit of cancer like two weeks ago. Um, is there any, is there any things that you're seeing trending in the church right now that we don't have to go long on this? Cause I have another question for you guys, but that might be new age. Angela, you have anything you can think of? Yeah. Um, Nayla and I were talking about this on the phone. Our list is quite long. We could like go until 6 a.m. But <laughs> something that I want to bring up because it's not really talked about a lot. And Isaiah, this isn't really relevant to you, but I've been doing a lot of obviously research on birth and, um, you know, understanding like what the best methods are, modalities and all these things. And I, and I heard this term that's really popular amongst Christians called Christian hypnobirthing. Oh, no. So it's. It's essentially hypnosis in order to give birth. So the idea is that you would achieve a pain-free birth through a modality of Ugh. hypnosis. And like the idea is, oh, it's Christian hypnobirthing. So we just say biblical affirmations. It is demonic, okay? There is there's a way to give birth with the Holy Spirit and partner with the Holy Spirit and renew your mind with scripture. But what hypnobirthing is, and this is going to make a lot of people mad, probably people in this chat that have may even done make it. Make him mad, Angela. Make him mad. It's, it's demonic because hypnobirthing, hypnosis is, alters your state of consciousness. That is the point of hypnosis by definition and design. 
And so you are trying to alter your own consciousness, whether or not you want to align to the word that's, it doesn't matter. You are trying by your own will to manipulate your consciousness in order to achieve this pain-free birth experience. Whereas the way the Lord has designed it is I can do all things through Christ who Come strengthens on. me. So I'm actually mm -hmm. just going to meditate on his promises as I give birth and let Holy Spirit move through me, not try and manipulate my own will, but let his will be done in the birth. And so this is really popular and I don't see a lot of people talking about it, I've but it's a new age that. practice. Yeah, wow. it's a new age practice. Mm -hmm. Hypnobirth. Yeah, hypnosis. <laughs> hypnosis is an occultic practice. Like hypnosis is completely demonic. So it doesn't matter what you're trying to hypnotize to. Just practicing hypnosis right. is witchcraft. So you, yes. again, like we said with yoga, you can't just slap Christian on it or Jesus on it and then say it's not occultic. That's like getting the Ouija board and saying in the name of Jesus. So when we when Angela and I heard that term, like we hear the oxymoron, mm. Christian yoga hypnobirth christian hypnobirth it doesn't make sense because mm -hmm. it's like putting um something evil with something holy and, and they don't go together and i also want yeah. to include and then i'll pass it to you nayla is hypnotherapy i had growing up we had a friend that was of course well she was a christian i, I shouldn't say of course but she did hypnotherapy and she uh basically she was overweight and she didn't want to eat so much and so she went and got hypnotherapy and they basically sat her down and said, you're not hungry. You know, you're going to get full mm -hmm. fast. And then I kid you not, she would eat like two or three bites of something and be full because they hypnotized her to believe when she ate a few bites, she was full. So people do this with drinking, smoking, addiction, and they go get hypnotherapy and you get hypnotized to thinking, you know, you don't want the cigarettes. But guys, that's mm -hmm. demonic. Hypnotizing is demonic. I know we do it at the fair. We're like, it's innocent. We're just making somebody uh, put, slap themselves with a banana or whatever dumb thing the fair makes you do. It is demonic. These people are new age practitioners. Hypnotism is a massive thumbs down. Even if you think, well, I'm doing it to get off cigarettes, you're still opening yourself up to demons. No hypnotherapy. Go ahead, Nayla. And I want, well, before she goes, I want to add one more thing because what you just said is so good. And I want to add to that something like that hypnotherapy, hypnobirth, whatever. It's all. It's all counterfeit because those things that you're describing, not overeating, not smoking, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control. Giving birth without fear, fruit of the Holy Spirit is peace. So you are trying to manipulate the will. You're trying to manipulate your own mind as opposed to leaning into your faith. All these things, it's a way to bypass what Jesus asks of us, which is our mm. faith. We walk in, in yeah. faith of him. So, so that's good. how it's counterfeit yeah, it, for anyone asking. It really comes back to the same lie that is behind new age that this, we keep referencing where the, the serpent lied to Eve in the garden and said, if you just disobey God and go your own way, then you can have power and you can be like God. It's the same with the, the hypnobirthing or with hypnotherapy. It's like, I want to change and I want to take control over my life. And I want to have the benefits of what I can receive from God, but without going to God, I'm right. just going to do it myself. And that is not the way because you can never sustain self-healing because you can't heal yourself. You can't wash your own sins away. You cannot redeem your own soul. Only Jesus Christ can save you. So, so good. yeah, we have to we have to stop like mixing all this occult witchcraft with Christianity. It's it's just rife in the church. Another one that we talked about, Angela and I on the phone was um personality tests. I feel like oh, those are go there. <laughs> those are things that people might not realize are a cult and they may be practicing them in the church so personality and tests personality tests would include um things like the enneagram um the i ching gene keys human design um can you think of others angela the enneagram uh, is probably the most popular yeah the enneagram is the most popular is for super sure demonic and the guy who made it and made it the famous book who says he's a christian if you go, I did a, re a review of the book and he starts talking about how the Enneagram is supernatural. It'll lead you, it'll guide you, it'll call you into yep. your destiny. It's alive and active. Dude is straight demonic and it's in the Christian yeah. category on Amazon and number one trending. And I won't mention the pastor's name, but some very famous, the most famous pastor in America, he recommended it to people. No, do not, Enneagram is demonic. You're like, I'm a number three, you're oh. number seven. Are we ordering at Carl's Jr.? Why are we calling ourselves numbers? Like, I'll get a number two, a number three. No, 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 no. It's demonic. Do not do the Enneagram. And I'm just throwing some humor in there, by the way, guys. It has pagan roots and an, occult, an occultist invented it. So the first person was 
a an occultist. So yeah. go ahead, Angela. And it's, it's no different than um, like you're saying, like you identify with these numbers. It's a it's an agreement. You're coming. It's just like the zodiac thing. Like oh, I am a this. I am a that. You're coming into agreement with the spirit behind that. And also, I'm sorry. Are you an enneagram enneagram type seven or are you a child of God? Because I'm pretty oh. sure your Bible says that your identity is in Christ alone. You're actually dead to yourself. Yes. So how can you love your own life not unto death and be obsessed with personality tests? Oh, it's, it's just a way for me to understand myself better. You don't need to understand yourself better. You need to crucify your flesh and die to yourself and walk alive unto Christ. You need to live for him. So that's good. It, so it, it's so it's so small, but it's a way that the enemy keeps us obsessed with ourselves is the Enneagram. And, yeah. and this is Angela too. Would you say that you taught obviously astrology? That was kind of your specialty, but you yeah. taught horoscopes. Now, again, we're just, listen, I hope you guys have still toe boots on. We're stepping on everybody's toes tonight. I know like if we haven't made you mad yet, we're getting to you. Okay. But horoscopes, I literally hear people in the church talking about this. Like I'm Leo, I'm this. I don't, I don't understand it all. I don't know all the names. I'm sure you guys do. We don't need to go into all the details. What are your thoughts, Angela, as an ex astrologer, if you guys didn't see it in the title on horoscopes and Christians, just like, it's no big deal practicing horoscopes. Yeah, it's demonic and every single verse that Christians use to justify astrology. Oh, the signs and seasons taken out of context, which mm. is what the devil does with scripture. He takes it out of context. The signs and seasons referring to, yes, God has laid out a, pl a plan, so to speak, and he uses the stars, he uses the moon, he uses the sun as, as a way to show us those things. But that's fulfillment of his prophecy. It's not to show you who you are or to give you some sort of self-prophecy. It's to fulfill his prophecy. Oh, they, fo they followed the star of Bethlehem. That was not astrology. They were following the prophecy of Daniel. Mm, so every argument I have, again, I have an episode on the Enneagram. I have an episode all about astrology. Every verse that people use to justify astrology, they cannot do so without taking it out of context. It is demonic. And just a little fun caveat to it, you know, the symbols itself, like all the astrological symbols that we see, those are called sigils. And sigils are used for magic. Sigils are seals, Holy Spirit seal. They are demonic seals that are basically pictorial signatures of spirits. People in magic use sigils in order to summon spirits. So you're identifying with, I don't know, Gemini or Cancer, whatever it is. You put that little, little sigil in your bio. This is me. You are agreeing with the spirit behind wow. it. You cannot separate this stuff, guys. It's demonic. So good. Yeah. So good. Go ahead. And it all comes it all comes down to the same issue that Angela was just talking about. The devil is trying to help you find ways to preserve your flesh, preservation yes. of yourself. The Bible says you to die to yourself. So you don't need to figure out what your identity is anymore. That's from your past before you knew Jesus. If right. you are walking with Jesus, you no longer have to struggle with identity issues. The Bible tells you who you are. You're a child of God and you need to die to that old identity and put on Christ. So this is something that when it's happening in the church, it's just really slack preaching and past yep. pastoral care because that preacher should be saying, let's read the Bible. Yes. <laughs> the Bible says put on Christ. Don't put on these these symbols from this zodiac system. Put on Christ. And I'm really just calling people into identity in the Lord, because if you don't know who you are in Jesus, then the devil can still try and persuade you to believe that you're your old dead self or that you're something in the world or that you should identify with these celebrities or these occult practices. We just identify with the one who saved us and made us born again, and that's Jesus. So good. And, so, and I want to I just signify the importance of what we're talking about tonight. Maybe us here, because this is what we do like for a living, is we teach and preach and, and expose these type of things. We might think this is elementary. Everyone knows this. As you guys have been talking, the chat, literally, people in the chat have been saying, I didn't even know this was wrong. I didn't know horoscopes are wrong. I didn't know yoga was wrong. And they're not being malicious. They're not being facetious. They're not being rude. They're genuinely, innocently saying, we just didn't know because because we because the church is not talking about it. Pastors are yeah. not talking about it. Leaders are not talking about it. So I want to make sure we realize how significant what we're talking about is tonight. And for those of you that are like, oh, stop talking about new age. We're going to regularly do these podcasts and expose the devil. And as it grows, we're going to continue to expose it and expose Satan's works because mm -hmm. Angela and Nayla, they didn't realize what they were doing was demonic. So we're bringing people out of the deception, out of the darkness, preaching against it, 
and the devil's being exposed. And all, all I can really say to those people that don't like this type of content is that's totally fine. There's so many good people you can watch on YouTube. If you don't like this type of content or this podcast isn't for you, watch next week. And if you don't like next week, maybe watch the week later. And if, if we're three weeks in a row and you still don't like it, go find a new channel to watch. I mean, I'm not, I just want to do what God's calling us to do. And I do believe God is telling us in this generation, expose the works of darkness, but snatch people out of the flames of hell. Let's literally snatch them yeah. out of the fire, hating even the garments that defile their flesh. So I just so appreciate you guys being on and talking about this. I do want to ask, I know we've been going an hour and a half. I want to ask and talk about one more key topic, and that is coming out of the new age like you guys did mm -hmm. and going into, uh, how do we say it? Religion, cessation. Let's just say like cessationist doctrine, or let's just say not really believing in deliverance and the supernatural and the gifts. I'll start with Nayla. Um, tell us a little bit, we won't go super long on this, but your journey of leaving new age and then kind of being afraid of what, what I do is that deliverance. I'm charismatic. I believe in gifts. I believe in the spirit. I believe in the supernatural. I believe the new age is, is a counterfeit of what the Bible teaches is the supernatural power of God. But I know both of you were turned off to that. You probably would have saw a guy like me immediately out of the new age and been like that guy's in the new age as well. But thank God the Lord uh, didn't allow you guys to go too far down that path. But Nayla, talk to us a little bit about your journey out of the new age and into, into religion, I guess. I'm just laughing because I remember when I had a spirit of religion and I, I tried to watch you, Isaiah. And I was oh, like, no. this guy, just, I was like, this, I can't watch him. He's too excited. He's just too excited all the time. And, and like, my, like that was <laughs> what the Lord has done. <laughs> That was a spirit that we call the religious spirit that like found Isaiah's passion and excitement and joy and even volume for Jesus um, triggering. But that's that's a demon that because if you're truly in love with Jesus, then you want to be passionate for him. Like you can't help yourself. You're on fire for him and it, it pours out of you. So now I'm that person that other people find obnoxious and say I'm too <laughs> spiritual. As I just Welcome can't to stop the light. talking about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So when I first got saved, um, you know, I came out of such a deep, dark place in the occult, and I was so advanced in the spirit realm. I was astro projecting. I was channeling multiple very high ranking demons. I was completely demon possessed when I got saved. The demon I had at the time, the Sophia Christ demon I mentioned, she took over my whole body. I felt her completely occupy my being and I knew that she'd taken over but I couldn't stop her from using me as an avatar she told me to shave my head I shaved my head to the wow. bone she told me to do rituals cover myself in blood I did them I would wake up in the night channeling her and writing her manifesto for her writing she wanted me to say and then um, preaching her demonic words to other people so she would speak through my mouth she could take over my tongue so when I came out of the new age I had such um, power there. I could speak in demonic tongues, which we call light language. In the New Age, I had mm -hmm. I had a very powerful light language, um, which is demonic tongues. I could travel in the spirit. I could see in the spirit. I could astro project. I could channel. I could manifest anything I wanted using a spell. I could make it come into existence. So I had so much power there, and I was using spiritual gifts that... Um, are God given, like being able to see in the spirit, but I was using them for evil. The devil had manipulated my perception of reality so that I was using something God gave me for Satan instead of for the kingdom. So when I came to Christ, I realized everything I was doing was witchcraft. Everything I was doing was demonic. And so I had to shut it all down. I deleted my website. I closed my business. I burned everything I owned. And I was like, I'm not doing anything except just following Jesus. So my heart was just, I want to be pure and obedient to Jesus because I know he's the only way to God. I don't want to take any other way. I just want to follow the narrow path of Christ. My heart was obedience. But through that, the devil deceived me into um, going into a religious church. So I went into what I just thought was a church. I didn't know what to expect from church. Turned out it was a religious cult and um, we weren't allowed to watch any other content on YouTube except our pastor's content. We weren't allowed to really explore the Bible for ourselves. We would just have 
um, the pastor's teaching, uh, gifts were not believed in, there was no praying for the sick, there was no speaking in tongues, so there's none of the power of God. And I became brainwashed within that system that, you know, all those things are are like from the new age. And because I came out of that, I'm like, yeah, wow. I don't want anything to do with that. That's like that's witchcraft, you know, I don't want to be seeing in the spirit or speaking in tongues because that's demonic, right? So I want to be holy, I want to be pure, I just want to I just want to follow Jesus. And so the devil used my good intention. And I think that's what he does with new ages. He uses our our good intention to really purify and separate ourselves from new age and from witchcraft, purify ourselves for, for God. He uses that desire to um, be obedient, to lead us into the other side of the spectrum. I was saying this to Angela, like whether you're in new age witchcraft or you're in dry, dead religion, the devil's laughing at you in both. He's happy. Wow. He's very content. If you're in both, if you're in any extreme of that spectrum, the devil is pleased with you. Because if you're in the new age, then you're practicing witchcraft. And God says witchcraft is an abomination that will cause you to be separated from him forever. And that all witches will have their place in the lake of fire. If wow. you are in dead religion, then you are basically lukewarm not believing what God says, not walking in faith, not really picking up your cross and following after Jesus as his disciple. You're just reading about God, but you're not having a relationship with God. If you're there, you are just as um, deceived as if you're a new age and the devil's just as happy with you because he's like, well, you're, you're no threat to me. You know, you're not wow. casting out demons. You're not setting people free. You're not sharing the gospel. But when I was lukewarm, I wasn't doing those things. When I was in religion, I, I found it hard to share the gospel. I wasn't praying for people who had demons. I was just going to church on a Sunday and trying to um, be a good person, I guess. I was trying to be a good disciple. Um, but God delivered me from that. He He woke me up and showed me that what I was doing was um, obeying a different God, a religious spirit that has different ideas about who God is than what it says in the Bible. And um, I just started to really read the scriptures for myself and go out and fulfill the great commandment. And and God took me all over the world, casting out demons, healing the sick, baptizing people, just using me because I said, I'm here, God, I want you to use me. And he took me on a journey of, of coming back into understanding that I am a spiritual being and I was created by, by a divine, spiritual, supernatural God and that he gave me certain gifts like I can see in the spirit. And that's a gift I use for the kingdom now. Um, I do have powerful tongues, but now I have angelic tongues. and I don't speak my demonic tongues anymore. I don't even know how to speak them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the gifts he's given me, discernment of spirits. I use that for his glory and to help set people free and to navigate this, this Christian walk with him. So these are things that if you have psychic spiritual gifts, the temptation coming out of new age is to shut everything down and become dry. But God doesn't want you to do Come that. On. He just wants you to do everything unto the Lord. He wants you to be set apart for him. He wants you to be on fire for him, moving in the spirit for him to advance his kingdom of light and come against the kingdom of darkness and be a threat. Like you, demons should tremble when they see you coming, Christian. If you're just like sitting in church on a Sunday and no demons afraid of you, then they're laughing at you and you are not free. If you think you're free, but you don't have any of the fruit of the God of freedom, then you're not really free. And, and, and you need to just like break out from whatever mind control you're in, which is what I was in. So good. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that because I know many people on YouTube and in the chat, they came out of the new age and now they're afraid of doing deliverance or like you said, speaking in tongues or praying for God to give them a dream or a vision or any of the spiritual gifts the Bible mentions. But guys, if you've had the counterfeit, don't you want the authentic? Like, I don't understand if you had the counterfeit, why throw it all away? If there was a counterfeit, then there must be an authentic because you can't counterfeit something unless there's something there originally. So yeah. to me, I'm like, I want the real. In fact, when I met Angela, well, when I reached out to Angela, she didn't see my email for like several months. She totally just left me on red, ghosted me, which is totally fine. She didn't know my message was sitting there for months. God was humbling me. I invited her on my show. I started seeing the people that she was with and doing shows with. And I was like, oh, she just... She's ignoring me because she doesn't like my, my type of Christian because I saw, you know, there's a lot of cessationists and reformed people she was around, which is fine. We love them. Awesome. Praise God. 
But really, real in reality, she just never saw my message. I just thought she must not like me because I'm spirit filled and um, she's dry filled. So I was like, she just doesn't like what I'm what I'm doing or what I'm preaching. But it wasn't the case. She just didn't see my message. My point is, it's very common for people like Nayla and Angela who've come out of heavy witchcraft to just not want to be like charismatic or believe in the gifts and the spiritual and all of that. But we know it is of God. We know that Jesus sent his disciples to do supernatural works. We know John 14, 12 says the works I've done, you will do and even greater because now I go to the father. We know Mark 16, 17, we'll lay hands on the sick. We'll cast out demons. We'll speak with new tongues. We know Acts 1, 8, we receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We know Acts 19, Paul did unusual miracles. I could keep naming, naming, naming. It's supernatural. Yeah, it's all there. God is supernatural. The gifts have not ceased. The Bible does not say that. Religious, traditional white men teach that the gifts aren't for today. The Bible does not teach that. So let's stop lying and lying on God and acting like the Bible says that when the Bible doesn't say that, tradition tradition says that. Um, the, God is supernatural. Hebrew says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same works that happen in scripture are happening and can continue to happen today. So Angela, share with us, you, had, you have a very similar journey. You came mm -hmm. out of new age and went into... Um, new age religiosity, which is, you know, which is just kind of just religion. I'm making up words now because uh, I'm just filling in the gaps. But yeah, tell us a little bit about your journey out of the new age and into religion. Yeah. So my heart was the same as Nayla. I just wanted to obey God because I knew I had been so deceived. And like I already told you about that conversation that I had with my now husband back when I first got saved, where I was telling him, you know, this isn't easy for me to admit that everything I believed in was wrong. So I just knew how wrong I was. Mm. All that I knew was how wrong that I was. And that's what I entered the faith in. You know, it, I, I knew that Jesus was the way, the truth and the life, but that's about all that I knew. Coupling that with, wow, I was wrong. I can't trust myself. I didn't know that Wow. It was no longer my own spirit that was calling the shots that his Holy Spirit, he actually gave it to me and it, and his Holy Spirit was living inside of me. So it's not that I was trusting myself anymore. It's that he had given me something called discernment, but I didn't know how to lean into that. I didn't know what that looked like. All I knew was that I was scared of disobeying God like I just did for 10 years. All I knew was that I was wrong. I'm susceptible to being wrong again because, you know, in the church, they teach you once a sinner, always a sinner. You're just wrong. You're just, you know, Jesus had to die because you were a loser. All these things that really, you know, cheapens the price of what he paid for because he died because he loves you and because you were worthy to him and because he wanted to restore you to himself. But I wasn't really being taught that. I was just being taught that I was a loser and that I would always be a loser. And that's why, you know, and yeah, that's, my sin is what put him on the cross, but his new life in me is what gives me the power to actually walk in that finished work. And I didn't know that because I wasn't being taught that. And so I saw, you know, I, I saw people doing this and that, and you weren't one of them, Isaiah. I didn't come across you until way later, which is a God thing, which I want to talk about because it was an answered prayer. But I saw people doing all this stuff and I, and I recognized it. I was like, that's new age. That's new age. It wasn't that it was new age. It's that it was just spiritual and i wow. and i saw the spirit the spirit moving and i was afraid it was a spirit of fear which the bible says that god has not given us that was calling those shots for me i wasn't listening to his holy spirit i was listening to the spirit of fear i was listening to the wrongs that i had done in the past and I was listening to other new agers that had come out of the deception. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was so afraid of being deceived. I thought these people know better than I do. So what did I do? I tried to learn from them. And, and what they taught me was new ages in the church. Now, new ages in the church. Now, you know, we always talk about, we come out of the new age and we talk about all these counterfeits and I'm guilty of that too. The first year I'm like, this is a counterfeit. That's a counterfeit. And yes, all these things are counterfeits. But like you said, Isaiah, that means there's a godly authentic. So yes. what I see is that all of these people, and God bless them, because you know that they love the Lord. They wouldn't say that about us. They would say that we're charlatans. But you know that they love the Lord, but that they're just a, they're traumatized. It's like a new age PTSD mm. almost. Mm. And yeah. so they teach about the counterfeits, but then just completely ne negate the authentic of, like, what is the authentic? So then we just teach all these former new agers that, oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, you had power, but 
there's no such thing as as having power in God now. It's just when what you know, you know the the irony of it is that they say like people like you Isaiah and now me too and now Nayla too. Like now we have videos being made about us and you know that that we're like working for the devil and we're the Welcome devil's the agents. Road. And all those things, right? It's like you you they give so much glory to the devil when really that's what these people in dry religion do. They give glory to the devil because mm. They're acting as though the devil has this, this dominion to deploy all this power into his disciples of the new age. But then, so then what are you saying that wow. once you come to Christ and you have the Holy Spirit, God doesn't give you power? Come Why on. are you actually giving the devil all the credit? Like it's the irony is that they're the ones giving the devil all the credit in this case. So good. And that's what I would had come to believe. And so after I got water baptized last year, it was like, it was just another layer of sanctification because I didn't understand how significant baptism truly is that it like drowned out these spirits that were inside of me that st I still needed to be cast out. It's not that I wasn't saved. It's that I wasn't walking in my salvation fully because I was still in so much bondage and because my faith wasn't where it needed to be. And because I wasn't actually doing the things or producing the true fruit that the gospel says, like Nayla said, that you should be producing. And so after my baptism, you know, stuff started to go awry, which is like backwards. It felt like it felt like it should have been the opposite, right? Like things should have gotten better after I got baptized, but things suddenly got worse. I started sinning more and people say, well, you're not taking accountability. No, I'm taking full accountability for, for that sin. But I'm telling you that there was something inside me because Holy Spirit lives there. I didn't want to be doing those things again. I didn't want to be mm. backsliding. But there was something that w was having me go in the trash can and pick weed out. Like, that wasn't me. And that wasn't the Holy Spirit living inside of me. And so I had to consider, I had to really humble myself. And this is the key whenever I tell my deliverance testimony. I had to admit yet again, oh, I'm wrong. Lord, if I'm wrong, show me. And I, I had to get on my knees and just beg him with just a heart full of humility and just say, Lord, I don't want to, I would just want to obey you. I just want to walk as you have instructed me to walk. If I'm wrong about the deliverance thing, show me. If it's another deception, show me. I trust you fully. And then, you know, it's giving him that permission to, to, because it's the faith, right? That, that Jesus always talks about. It's that implantation of faith. So I said, okay fine, show me, show me, reveal it to me, show me. It wasn't a heart of pride where I was hardened to the possibility that deliverance could ever actually be real. It was my heart had to be softened to the possibility that it was. And so he showed me. And one of the ways that he showed me was I would have people every so often comment on my stuff and be like, you, you have you ever been delivered? And I'm like, no, the finished work on the cross is enough because that's what they always say, right? You're, you're get, you know, the, the cross isn't enough for you. Jesus isn't enough for you. When really it's actually that he's so enough for us that we understand the power in his name and what yes. he really died for and what he really paid for. Um, so uh, that's, that would be my response. And then someone sent me one of your videos, Isaiah, and I just started watching all your content and Holy Spirit was just moving, doing such a great work in me as I was watching your videos. And I began to recognize like, this is probably something that I need. Mm -hmm. And so I went to reach out to you and that message was there. And it was just a God thing because yeah. he had, I was so desperate. I was so desperate to know the truth yet again. And your message was waiting for me. I went to your page. You were already following me. Like it was just like, it was such easy access. And it's not because the Lord was like, oh, this guy's, because this is not the other popular narrative, right? Oh, all my salvation's in Isaiah. No, it's that the Lord used him to kind of disciple me in this area, like a brother, which he yeah. is. And we went through deliverance. You went through deliverance with me. I had several deliverance um, prayers. And I did, by the way, manifest the Kundalini spirit. And it was, it was just like yoga. But... Yeah. Ever since then, I mean, people noticed that in me. My audience noticed. I never even said, I, it was months before I started talking about it, but they noticed. They're like, you look different. Why wow. are your eyes brighter? Why is your face brighter? Why are you smiling more? And even Nayla noticed. She's like, you dress more modestly now. And I never <laughs> even told her. So 
It's just Amazing. all these people were noticing. It's because the demons were gone. <laughs> That's so good. yeah, mm -hmm. I just That's think so that it ultimately comes from trauma yeah. and fear. It really does. And I want to say that the tragic irony of everything that we're talking about is that the same people who think there's no power in God anymore, there's no supernatural power in the church and are denying scriptures that actually teach that we are to walk in the fruit and the power of the Holy Spirit. Those same people are okay with yoga happening in the church. Preach. They're okay with the yoga club. Preach. And it's like, what is happening? You see how the devil's playing us because the truth is the same tragic irony is happening on the other side of the fence in New Age. New Ages are being sold a counterfeit spirituality that is dead, that has no power, that will not save their souls. And they're being told that it's going to save them. And they've been tricked by Satan to believe that the true God, Jesus Christ, who can actually save you from sin and actually redeem you to God, reconcile you to your creator, is some kind of powerless religious symbol. You see, he's playing everyone off each other. It's all smoke and mirrors. The only truth is in the Bible. So that's why if you actually read the Bible, whether you are a new ager or a dead religious lukewarm christian if you actually read your bible you will you will understand the truth is that god is a supernatural god who parted the red sea who raised jesus from the dead and who has resurrection power in you and now his spirit lives inside of you you have the power to heal the sick cast out demons save people from hell by sharing the gospel with them Come sharing on. your testimony like we have power to actually heal and help and save this broken world. It's what everyone wants, right? Uh, That's so The good. only way is it's so simple. And stop listening to the devil's lies. If you're a new ager, what you're doing will never save your soul from sin. No practice you're doing will ever save your soul from sin. If you're a lukewarm Christian, you need to wake up because Jesus says it is more dangerous to be lukewarm than to be cold. He says he'll spit you out yeah. if you're lukewarm. He says you should better, you'd be better off if you were unsaved, if you yep. were cold, to be lukewarm. So you are in spiritual danger more so than an unsaved person if you're a lukewarm religious Christian who's a cessationist who just goes on a Sunday and doesn't have a relationship with the living God in the secret place. So you see, this, this, this whole conversation, I'm seeing it from every side, like everyone is getting deceived as long as they're not in the middle the middle narrow road, just believing the word of God, um, praying in tongues, fasting, spending time in the secret place with God, worshiping him, being on fire and sold out for him. That's the only way yeah. to have a relationship with God. And That's Jesus, so you know, good. nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does it say to, you know, Jesus didn't instruct us to be a theologian. He instructed us to be a follower. Come on. So, yeah. And yeah. I think the argument that a lot of people have is, one is you guys don't believe in the power of the cross. You don't trust the cross enough, but we literally do deliverance because of the power of the cross, because right. we believe in the finished work of the cross and we want all that God paid for. Jesus paid for our deliverance. According to the Bible, he took lashes so we can be healed and delivered. And we're applying his finished work of the cross. You're believing in it, but you're not applying it to anybody's life. And it's in that right. finished work, we can be healed. That's what literally, guys, Google salvation. It's sozo. It means to be healed, delivered, made whole, preserved, and saved. It's not just, I die and get hit by a bus one day and float off to heaven. It's right now on this earth, I can be healed in my body. I can be delivered yes. from all these demonic things that were in my life before. And so this argument of, well, if you just believe in the finished work of the cross, you we don't need deliverance. We believe in the finished work of the cross. Uh, why didn't Philip say that in Acts chapter 8 when he preached the gospel and cast out demons? Uh, why didn't Jesus say that when he was casting demons out synagogue to synagogue everywhere he went? Why didn't Paul say that? Everything you're saying about we believe in the finished work of the cross, we don't need deliverance, is not in the Bible. No disciple mm -hmm. ever said that. They cast out demons. They healed the sick. Well, you know, brother, towards the end of the book of Acts, the miracles uh, slowed down. No, the last chapter of Acts, an entire island got healed. Like it got, it got more intense, not less intense. So all of these arguments fall. And then lastly, they will say, now they all believe, by the way, that the devil speaks. They all believe demons speak. They all believe that. And they all make these uh, celebrity exposed videos like so-and-so is demonic, so-and-so. They make all these videos about all of these celebrities that are hearing from demons Yet, so now all these celebrities hear from demons, but Christians can't hear from God because that same camp teaches mm -hmm. God doesn't speak anymore. 
Everything God ever wanted to say is already in the Bible. He doesn't speak anymore. He just, he's done talking. God's done. He just wrote all of it. It's all in the Bible. So they teach that, but they still believe the devil speaks. They still believe demons speak. Right. They still, none of them will say, well, psychics and mediums, they're all fake. No, they all believe that psychics and mediums have power. So hold on, let me just right. scratch my head. You believe the devil speaks, demons talk to people, psychics have power, mediums have power, Ouija boards have power, celebrities sold their souls to the devil and demons, yet somehow Christians can't hear from God anymore because mm -hmm. we already have the Bible. There's no supernatural power of God. Nobody's getting healed. Demons aren't being cast out. There's no sign gifts, which... There's no such thing as a sign gift. That's a man-made term. These gifts aren't for today anymore, but the devil gets to have all the power? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't see that. I see Jesus dethroning Satan's power, giving power to the disciples, saying, I'm giving you guys the keys, and you can trample serpents, scorpions, and you have authority over all the power of the devil, which is what you talked about mm -hmm. earlier, Angela. So to me... Yeah. It's a big thumbs down. The cessationism, right. the religion, it's a it's a massive 10 thumbs down. It's not scriptural. Yeah. It's not biblical. It's a doctrine of demons, in my opinion. Okay, I'm saying that. I believe it's a doctrine of demons. And it's quenching the Holy Spirit of God. It's quenching the move of God. We need revival. We need the power and the presence of God. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need to be awakened to the truth of God's word. We believe in the finished work of the cross. That is why we pray for the sick. That is why we cast out demons. That is why we preach Christ and Christ crucified. That's all we claim to know is Christ, Christ crucified. He died. He rose again. How must we be saved? Acts 2, 38 says you need to repent of your sin. You need to repent. You need to turn from your sin. You can't be lukewarm. You can't be in compromise. You can't dabble in witchcraft. You can't dabble in sin. We need to live a higher standard. We need, we need to live above reproach. We need to live like we're in a glass house, like everybody's watching at all times. We need to d demand a higher standard from our pastors and leaders. We can't be okay with our pastors and leaders cheating on their wives, living in sexual sin, uh, abusing people, humiliating people, manipulating. All of this cult-like stuff has to stop. We need men of God, women of God that are holy, that are in prayer, that are soaked in the presence of God, that are dripping with the oil of the anointing of God's spirit, that are getting in the secret place, that have healthy marriages, healthy children. Come on now, chat. Where are you guys out of preaching a sermon here? We need revival. <laughs> Revival and a move of God. Yeah. I'm going to give you guys a chance to give any closing thoughts. We're an hour and 50 minutes in. Uh, guys, we had to do a part two because our first stream went down. It is what it is. That'll be on the channel. Maybe the Lord's going to grow both of these even more. So God wanted that and knew <laughs> what the enemy meant for bad. God's going to turn around for good. Amen. Give us, guys, quickly any Amen. closing thoughts. And then I will have Nayla close us out in prayer and pray for all those new agers watching and those of you that have new age people family members that are new agers we're going to pray your family get saved as well tonight but yeah closing thoughts that you guys might have yeah i just want to speak to any new agers that might have come across this video and just reiterate what we've been saying this whole time we are not trying to tell you that you're wrong that your spiritual hunger is wrong I'm actually in agreement that you are a spiritual being. You were created by God to be a spiritual being. And your hunger for God is natural and right. And you should be seeking the truth. I was a truth seeker. That's what led me to Jesus because I ultimately um, would not stop looking for the truth. So if you are a true truth seeker, if you truly want truth, just keep looking for the truth with that pure heart and asking for it. And you will arrive at Jesus Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to God or have relationship with God except through Jesus. So the devil will offer you other paths. And the devil says all roads lead to God, but that is a lie. You know, the devil is a deceiver. The whole point of deception is you don't know you're deceived. Otherwise, you wouldn't be deceived. So you're so being good. deceived. The, the devil is lying to you. He's telling you you can get there through yoga or meditation or um, through going to these shamans and doing these rituals, plant medicine, ascending in consciousness. None of it will work. It's all a lie. It's a lie from a very intelligent liar who has been a liar since the beginning. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. So if you're truly in this for the truth, just ask, ask God to show you the truth and you will arrive at a revelation that Jesus Christ is God and that he died to save your soul from sin and that you can only have a relationship with God through him. So, so um, I just, yeah, I just really want to speak to anyone who's stumbled across this video and is like, who are these crazy people? 
we were just like you. We thought we were so spiritual. Angela and I thought we were so wise and we studied everything and we thought we understood everything and we thought we were on a healing journey. And Jesus in his mercy came and slapped us both awake. <laughs> like he came and just like broke us open and, uh, and, and the blindfold was removed and we got to see the truth finally. And now we both have a peace and just a joy that is unshakable, which nothing in this world can give you. Only Jesus can give you that. Come on. So yeah. good. So good. Angela, any closing thoughts? And then we'll have Nayla pray for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to speak to both the New Agers and then maybe the those of us that have come from New Age and are now walking with Christ. First to the New Agers, I want to say, copy and paste everything Nayla said. And to that, you know, we're not trying to condemn you. This isn't about disrespecting you or unloving you. You know, none of none of the above. All those popular lies that you hear, Christians are judgmental, Christians are mean. Yeah, there are people in the church that are those things, but they're just in the church. They're not actually in Christ, okay? So mm. please hear us when we say we're not here to condemn you. We want to tell you the truth because we love you mm. and we get so passionate about this you know, we make jokes, we we laugh, we get we get fired up because we were there and we see now, you know, the Bible says those with ears to hear, let them hear, eyes to see, let them see. We have the eyes to see now, we have the ears to hear now, and we are just praying on your behalf that you would have that as well, that your heart would soften to the truth because like I said before, the truth has a name and his name is Jesus and everything you are trying in the new age. It's promising you salvation by means of your own works, whereas salvation is only found through the saving grace of Jesus Christ that is in faith, that he is who he says he is. Mm. Okay, he died for you. Your sin that you are in right now, put him on that cross, yes, but he died for you because he loves you in spite of that. It doesn't matter how, how, how much you've done against him, whatever brought you to this point. I know you know it's not working or else it would have worked by now and you wouldn't even be watching this video right now. If, if you could have done it by yourself, you would have, but you can't because you weren't created to. Jesus Christ came to reconcile you back to a holy God who loves you and made you in his image. Okay, and don't let the church lie to you that there is no power with God. You don't come to God for power, but let me tell you something. His Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, He gives that to you when you become Amen. a new creation in Him. The Spirit that raised Him from the dead lives inside of you when you belong to him. Okay. So you will have power in his name. Again, you don't come to God for that power. That is a gift that he gives you as a byproduct of simply being his. You come to him because the, the word says we love because he first loved us. So you must have that revelation of how much he loves you because then you will fall in love with him as a byproduct of that. I promise you that he is irresistible. Jesus Come is on. absolutely irresistible. He is the savior of humanity. He, he, he desires you in all your brokenness. He desires you. There is only one you and he wants you back to himself. And now once, once he has you, once you surrender, once you put, once you transfer the faith you have in yourself and your works and your rituals and your practices into what he did for you on the cross, then he gives you his Holy Spirit. And so now if you're listening and you do have his Holy Spirit, you have transferred that faith from yourself to him and what he paid for. I need you to hear me and to understand that. Everything you experienced in New Age, all that power, that was a counterfeit because like we've been saying, the devil can only steal, kill, and destroy. He cannot create. He does not have a design plan, okay? He overturns what God has created and he perverts it. So everything that you experienced in New Age is a counterfeit of something real and it belongs to God and it is yours to have when he puts his Holy Spirit inside of you because you are a new creation, dead to who you were as a sinner, alive unto him, okay? And so it's not your power anymore. 
It's his power living inside of you. And it is real. Don't let these other people that are traumatized by what they've been through take away from what he's been through, what he paid for on your behalf to give to you, to not just, like Isaiah said, you're not just going to get hit by a bus and go to heaven someday. He puts heaven inside of you. Yes. You can Mm -hmm. live saved now. You don't have to wait for heaven. You can live saved now. And all these things, you know, the wonder working power of God that is alive and well and supernatural and spiritual and all of these things, you know, it's, it's not in spite of the Bible, it's because of the Bible that these yes. things are possible. It's about having a true relationship and walking that relationship out, not just reading about it. These aren't just words on a paper, okay? This isn't just, this isn't just, these aren't words for you to just read and to highlight and to intellectualize. This is for you to mm-hmm. demonstrate. The Bible mm-hmm. is not just prescriptive, it's demonstrative. And so my prayer for the church is that they would begin to demonstrate what's in these pages and not just read about it and make YouTube videos about it. Because we have, we have to stand at the gates of hell and redirect traffic right now. Come on. And we're only going to do that through the demonstration of this come to life. So good. So good. You just preached a fiery sermon. I was over here. I'm ready for the altar call. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I'm like, Lord, yes. I say yes to you. That was so good, Angela. Nayla, would you just pray us out? Mm -hmm. And then I'll stay on a little bit after. And I want to give everybody a chance to sow into your guys' ministries Mm -hmm. and bless you guys. And then you can tell us where to find you. But yeah, Nayla, pray us out. And uh, we'll just Mm -hmm. believe God to touch people. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and have this conversation. Thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for everyone that's listening right now, either live or on the replay. I just bless every single person who's listening right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for your people lost in new age, for your lost children that you love so much, that you sent your only son to die on a cross to pay for their sins and wickedness in advance so that they could be reconciled to you, so that they could turn and repent for their sin, so they could turn from this witchcraft that they're in and they could be forgiven and made whole and healed by your power, by your spirit, by your son's precious blood. I want to speak to every Every single new ager who's listening right now, everyone who's stuck in occult practices, doing witchcraft, even if they didn't know they were in witchcraft, those who are practicing yoga, meditation, tarot cards, those who are doing crystal healing, sound healing, those who are watching gurus on the internet trying to find out why they're alive, what is their purpose, why am I here, those who are seeking truth but don't know that Jesus Christ is the way. Lord, will you touch their hearts right now? Yes, God. Give them a revelation of Jesus Christ. I pray for opened eyes tonight. I pray that that blindfold the enemy has put over their eyes be ripped off, that their hearts would just break open and they would see that they cannot save themselves, that there's no way out of this mess except through Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross, that the only savior that they need is Jesus because he has already defeated all the power of sin and darkness and death in this world. And if they would just surrender to him and receive his gift, his free gift, that they could have eternal life and all that peace they're longing for, that that healing that they're hungering for, they're striving for in the world is only achievable through surrendering to the finished work of Jesus. He's done it all. Lord, give them a revelation of how much you love them, Jesus, how much you are just seeking their souls you are pursuing them that's why they're listening to this prayer right now because you're hunting them down you're chasing after their souls because you love them and you want them to be reconciled to you lord will you just give everyone listening in the new age a revelation that jesus christ is god and god is love that the love they're seeking after can only be found in the one and only god who created their soul Lord, open the eyes of the lost tonight, we pray. And I pray for the lukewarm Christians in the church. Anyone who's just walking, sleepwalking through their faith, through their life, through their relationship with Jesus, not not even making space for Jesus because they're so busy focusing on themselves or their jobs or just the, the worries of this world. Those lukewarm Christians that have become so familiar with their faith that they just go through the motions. They just go to church on a Sunday 
Sunday, or they don't even believe in the freedom that they proclaim to have received from Christ. Those Christians who still think they're sinners, even though the Bible says they're saints, I pray, Lord, that you would just radically intercede for them, Jesus. I pray that you would give them dreams, visions, showing them that they are in danger, Lord. You say that to be lukewarm is more dangerous than to be cold, that they could be spit out of your mouth for being lukewarm. So I pray you give them these revelations of the danger they're in. Show them that they may be sleepwalking to hell. Wake them up and convict them of sin in the church. Convict them of these occult practices. I just pray for revelation, opened eyes, opened minds, opened hearts, I pray for your wisdom to fall upon your church and sanctify your bride and, and just wake everyone who's sleeping up, whether it's in New Age or in the church. Lord, we are we are in the end times and you have prepared us and you have given us life for a time such as this. Will you empower your church, God, to go out and preach the gospel and heal the sick and cast out demons and save the lost? Because that is your heart for humanity and that is yes. what you died for, Jesus. Amen. So set us on fire tonight, God, for you and let us live completely yes. sold out for Jesus. Let us die to ourselves and just give everything to God. We pour out all our oil for you, Lord, and we live for you. Will you empower every single person listening to be a new creation today? In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And God, we Thank just pray, God, fill every person watching this with your Holy Spirit. God, baptize them in the Holy Spirit and fire. I pray, God, for those unbelievers that Nayla just prayed for. Lord, I pray they would repent tonight. Guys, I was an atheist at an altar and said, God, I don't believe in you, but if you're real, I'll give you everything. Lay your life down. God showed up in my life and changed my life. doesn't matter if you're an atheist, a warlock, a witch, a new ager. Repent of your sin. In Acts 2.38, they heard this a message like we said tonight, and they said, what must we do to be saved? And Peter said, repent. So tonight, I want to ask you to repent of your sin. Put your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and you will be born again and you will be saved and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray repentance, God. Salvation would happen tonight, Lord, and that you would baptize these people in your Holy Spirit. God, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with the power of God. Anoint them tonight, God. Use them for your divine purposes, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. What a powerful, Amen. powerful time tonight, guys. I think we all knew. I, I do apologize for the time difference for you guys. Angela several hours ahead. Nayla is in a new country every other day. We don't even know what country she's in. She goes from country to country preaching and ministering to people. So she's in, uh, you know, some other country. We know the time is much different. So thank you guys so much for being on. Starting with Angela, where can they find you? Just so you guys know, my moderators are the best on YouTube and they've been spamming your guys' links in the description. I mean, sorry, in the oh, comments yeah. the whole time. So Angela, they've been spamming your link. They've been spamming awesome. your link, Nayla. But Angela, where can people find you if they want to stay connected and find some of these other teachings? Yeah, so I have on YouTube Heaven and Healing Podcast. Um, I have episodes with Isaiah. I have a couple episodes with Nayla. One of the very first episodes of Heaven and Healing is like, almost two years ago with me and Nayla and we did one recently when she was here at my house in August on maintaining deliverance and rejecting lukewarm Christianity that I highly recommend everyone watch um I live stream every Wednesday night at 8 p.m central time so Isaiah I'm really glad to hear that your new schedule does not conflict with that <laughs> you're waiting you're like what's his new schedule <laughs> Wednesday nights no I'm just kidding <laughs> So yeah, That's Wednesday awesome. nights, 8 p.m. Central. Tomorrow night, I'm doing um, my first in-person live stream with our mutual friend, Isaiah. Oh, and Nayla too, TJ. Um, he's sharing his testimony. He shot someone and found the Lord in a little white shed. He's going to be talking about baptism story. and deliverance. Yeah. What time he's is that? Been... You said 8 o'clock Central. 8 Central, which is the same time you go live. Yeah, so, so the same Central. time, guys, the same time I go live Monday and Tuesday, you can jump on Angela's just your alarm's already there, right? Isn't your alarm already set for six o'clock? So set your alarm for Wednesday, jump in Angela's stream. And it's a powerful testimony. I've heard some of it. I'll be in there tomorrow night. Make sure you guys jump in mm -hmm. there. Sorry, Angela, go yeah. ahead and cut you off. I wanted to plug that. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk. We're probably going to go just as long as we did tonight. We're going to talk about his testimony. Um, and then we're going to get into baptism and deliverance and how that's really woven throughout the entire Bible from old Testament to new Testament. Um, my Instagram name changed. It's no longer Angela Marie Uchi. It's Angela Marie Scafidi. I shared Scafidi. that. I shared that at the beginning. Yeah, it sounds like a pasta dish. Um, 
And yeah, that's that's about that's I think that's all I got. And she have an inhaling podcast, soon, and, so she's taking yes. some time off. But guys, listen, but she's a, she's a real out. content creator because she's making content so that when she's gone, she'll be uploading. So you won't even know. You'll see her one day, yeah. and then boom, all of a sudden, a baby will be on stream, and you'll be like, "How did yes. that happen?" <laughs> it's because she was scheduling out her content. So make sure you guys yes. follow, subscribe to her. The best way you guys can support us is by following our content, subscribing, and partnering with us. So thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Nayla, where can they find you? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Undone by Grace. And I also have a YouTube channel, Naila Rose. Which is in the description. So guys, please give them a follow. I really appreciate you guys. I, I think we already know we're going to all do more episodes together this year and everything like that. We're going to let Angela have her baby, give her a little bit of a break, and then we'll be bugging her again. I know you guys in the comments are like, invite Angela, invite Nayla on again. We got to give them like a week or two break. You guys can't have me just keep bringing on people over and over and burning them out, especially because people are like, I don't know if I could be on your show. You go two hours. I've never talked two hours in my life. Hey. Me, Angela, Nayla, we're just getting started. We, we can talk it. two hours. Yeah, we we can talk, yeah. put it that way. So I love having Our you guys on because like, we all talk. We keep it to two hours? We're like, how can we keep it to two it's hours? It's funny because yeah. usually with my guests, I tell my guests like, all right, take your time. Hey, answer this question for like 20 minutes with you guys. I'm like, let's all try to go quickly because I know I, I love it. As a content creator, we want guests on that talk a lot because it makes our job easier. So I'm here for it. I appreciate it. I don't think you guys are long-winded. I think everything you guys say is relevant. It's powerful. I don't think either of you just talk to talk. You guys, everything you guys say is good. I'm serious. I'm not just saying that. You guys are great communicators. You guys have a special calling. And I see you guys leading an army of ex-New Agers out of darkness into light. And it's a revival. It's amazing. If the church doesn't want the New Agers, ex-New Agers, we want them. We want to see them get saved. God, send us the crazy ones. We don't want the recycled Christians. We want the crazy ones. So here we are. Thank you guys for being on. I'm going to stay on and let them sow into you guys. But thank you guys so much for being on. So Isaiah. Thank awesome. you, Isaiah. We love see you. you. Guys. God bless God bless. You. Love you guys. God bless. Bye. All Bye. right, ladies and gentlemen, let's sow into their ministries. The links to give are on the screen. You've heard us say it before. And first of all, how is it so hot in my studio? It's 86 degrees. What is really going on here? What is happening? It's supposed to be winter time here. All right. Anyways, that's another point. I was just distracted. So into the broadcast. If you go to Denny's, which if you're going to Denny's right now, you it's anyways, if you go to Denny's and order food, you pay, you don't, you don't dine and dash. Dine and dash means when you eat something and then you leave without paying. This doesn't cost you anything. By the way, this is free tonight. We don't charge. All of our content is free. 99. It's all free. But the way we survive, if you're like, well, how is it free? And how do you survive and pay the bills and employ people to help you run your streams and edit your videos? All that is because people sow. So sow where you grow. That's what I like to say. If you grow in this ministry, sow into it. If you can't afford to give, I'm going to tell you something most pastors won't say, then don't give. If you can't afford to give to this ministry, don't give. I smell something. I think my wife's cooking something. I don't know. I smell bacon or potatoes or something going on in the kitchen. I am hungry. I've had a long day. I haven't ate much, but I want you guys to sew into the broadcast tonight because I'm going to be sewing into these ladies. Okay. So a portion of whatever you give is going to go to them. In fact, I will probably be safe to say I'm going to give more tonight. I'll be negative tonight. Let's just say that more than you guys give will go to them. We probably won't even as much as I'm going to give them probably won't even come in, which is fine. But if you can't afford to give, then give. And if you're like one of those Christians that are like, I don't want to give. I can't believe they're asking me for money. Then guess what? Don't give and go cry somewhere else. Okay. I have to say that's my famous line. No offense. If I say go cry somewhere else, it's no offense. I got four little kids. They cry all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I deal with crying a lot. So it's all good. Warren and Donna, thank you so much for the donation. They said, thank you, Isaiah. We appreciate you and all you do. And Sarah King, thank you. Okay, very important updates. Actually, let me give you a couple important updates that I didn't give you earlier. If you're still on here, it's because you like my ministry. So important updates. January 28th, I'll be at the Way World Outreach in San Bernardino. The Way World Outreach San Bernardino. Where do I find that info? I'm glad you asked on my website. It's on my website. February 24th, I'll be in Antioch, California. Where do I find that info? It's on my website. And then guess what? March 3rd, we have a very special service at Lifesong in Stockton. That is my home church. March 3rd, Lifesong in Stockton. That'll be on the website soon. Five services. Did you just say five? Yes, five services. We're going to have Encounter Sunday. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to cast out demons. It's going to be amazing. Those are my dates. New stream schedule. 
Monday night at 6, that's the same. Tuesday night at 6, that's the same. And Thursday at noon. This is 2024, Thursday at noon. God willing, every week. And then we have a new thing happening. Thursday at 1.30 p.m., we're having prayer meetings with our monthly partners. So if you want to be a part of those prayer meetings, you got to be a monthly partner. I can't open them to everybody because we crash Zoom. All right. Thursday at 1.30 every week, I'll be praying with you guys, getting to know you guys. This year, we are building our community, our monthly partnership, our community. We're going to be building that up and getting to know you guys better. So you can partner on the website, IsaiahSaliver.com slash partner, scan the QR code. Or you can partner on YouTube and be a member, join the YouTube. On Monday, that's next Monday, I'll be sending out a static Zoom link. That means it'll be the same link all year. Save it to your notes, and then you can jump in the prayer meeting and all that good stuff, okay? No more Fridays at noon. We're doing Thursday at noon. Friday doesn't work out for our schedule with my kids, with my wife, with our life. I didn't mean to rhyme there, but I did. I'm, I'm you know, I might be a rapper here soon. You guys don't know. I might just be dropping a hip-hop album, a rap album. I might just be dropping a single. We don't know. Who knows what Isaiah's going to do next? Right now, I'm involved in pickleball. Next month, I might be involved and become a rapper. Who knows? Uh, maybe I'll one day I'll be playing ski ball. Maybe I'll become a professional bowler. Maybe I'll become a professional snowboarder. Who knows what I'm up to? But we're going to be praying at 1.30 on Thursday, and then we'll be live at noon on Thursday. So this Thursday at noon, we will be live. What are we going to be doing? I don't know. Maybe praying. Maybe taking calls. Who knows? Little Zay on the beat. I just don't understand. This is the temperature of my office right now. Somebody please explain to me how it's so hot in here. 85 degrees. My computer is struggling tonight. It's just putting out so much heat. It's supposed to be like cold outside or something. I don't really know. I don't know where the snow is, where the cold is. Who knows? It doesn't even snow where I live. What am I even talking about? And now I'm rambling. I've been live for two and a half hours. My brain... My brain is all, you know, scrambled up like scrambled eggs. And I'm thinking about scrambled eggs because I'm hungry. I just had the AC on, but I turned it off. So anyways, so where you grow, don't dine and dash. If you can't afford to give, thank you. Jenny said, no more deliverance guys dropping rap music, please. Jenny, <laughs> Jenny, you're hilarious. Yeah, listen, guys, just because you're a Christian preacher, pastor, doesn't mean you should be rapping. I'm just saying. That's all I'm going to say before I get myself in trouble. Jenny said, no more deliverance ministers rapping, please. If you know, you know. Just saying, hey, we're not out here to call anybody out. But just because you're a pastor or a Christian doesn't mean you should be rapping. All right. Praise the Lord. God has not gifted all of us. Love you, Jenny. All right. Everybody give. Thank you. Partner monthly. You'll get the link tonight or you'll get an email tonight from me. And then on Monday, you'll get the link. Join on YouTube members. I'm going to listen. I keep peeking my mic out. It's making me frustrated. All right, here's the thing. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I got up really early today. <laughs> Jenny said, stay in your lane, y'all. I was joking, guys. All right, listen. Jenny said I can't have a... If you guys are mad that I don't have a Christian rap album, it's because of Jenny. No, I'm just kidding. I wasn't planning a rap. That was a joke. All right, anyways. I'm going to get off here. With no ending screen. With no dancing Carl. I'll play... I'll show you Carl just for a moment, and that's it. I know. Boo. But I've been live for two hours and 30 minutes. I need to get off. I need to say goodnight to my kids. And I was supposed to get a bunch of work done tonight, but I think I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do that tomorrow. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm tired. My brain is uh, deep fried, which I like deep fried things. I'm hungry. I'll see you guys Thursday in two days at noon. And then next Thursday, we'll start the prayer meetings every single week. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. God bless.